Hi everybody. So I'm trying to get into the light here where uh, there aren't going to be weird shadows all over everything and it's just hitting the wrong way. So I do apologize for how it looks, but that's okay because I feel like a great big giant bag of asses today. I've got a bad cold and I'm not feeling at all well. So, but I did want to check in because it is following. Yay! As much as I feel like ass right now, uh, uh hot. Halloween and October season is, of course, the best time of the year because the leaves are changing, the temperature is great, and Halloween's coming. Best day of the year. Yay! Okay. So this, in the past couple of weeks, I have finished one of the stories, one of the books that was on the NPR's uh, 100 Great Reads, uh, Best Scariest Books of All Time as voted by the public and I was a little bit disappointed and so the story was Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco and it's about a couple named Ben and Marion and they go you know they they're they live in New York City Ben's a teacher trying to write a book, maybe thinking about working on a master's degree, kind of frustrated with the way everything is. And he goes to, uh, and <laughs> he loses the car one day and, you know, the family is not really looking forward to another summer in the city. <clears throat> so Ben and his wife, Marion, and they take their son, David, and they see this ad and they, they go and they look at this amazing house out somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think it's supposed to be upstate or something. And they get there and the house is owned by this woman, Roz Allardyce, and her brother, who's only called brother. And there's a caretaker and they, you know, they look around and it's, it's amazing. It's this beautiful, you know, stately Victorian mansion and it's got a pool and it's right on the shore, like on the beach. So, I mean, it is the most luxurious place anybody could ever want to live. And they... They go, yeah, this is amazing. And <laughs> get this, $900 for two months in the summer. I mean, even in the 70s, that was a that was a steal. Can you just imagine that now? Wow. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, of course, if anything seems to be too good, it usually is. So, Roz and brother reveal that uh the house comes with a catch and that is that their mother who is 85 and never leaves her room comes with the house and they have to take a tray to her three times a day and that's all you know she won't be any trouble you won't even see her she may not even eat but you still have to kind of be responsible for doing this so the family goes back home and they're like, well, eh. <laughs> but over a short period of time, they decide, okay, you know what? Let's take it. Let's do it. And then nothing happens for about a hundred pages. Oh my God. It's so boring. I'm going to give this, this book three and a half out of five because I really didn't enjoy it. I, I'm like reading and reading and, it, and I'm 45% into the book and I'm like, is anything ever going to happen? So finally, eventually it does happen and Marion, uh, and they, they also bring Ben's aunt Elizabeth along with them. And, you know, a couple of things happen and what we're supposed to see is that the house is bringing out the worst in both of them. Ben starts, you know, there's unusually, he's unusually aggressive with both his wife and his son. And, uh, 
there's a great scene where he tries to where he practically tries to drown his son and his son clocks him in the face with a <laughs> with a snorkeling mask i was like yes good this guy's an asshole um <coughs> oh, excuse me <laughs> but again nothing really happens for a long time until you're about 80 percent of the book into it and then it gets good but that good really 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 takes entirely too long to get to so that's why i didn't really enjoy this book it was pretty boring and these people are not interesting or compelling enough to care about um we don't find out very much about who they are outside of the fact that marion likes nice things and ben's kind of an asshole and just gets worse as as they go <clears throat> and david's just kind of there Aunt Elizabeth is probably the most interesting character, but she doesn't, we don't know anything about her, you know, even by the end of it. It's like, so the reason I read it, I mean, other than just being on the list was that it was supposed to have been a big influence on Stephen King's writing The Shining and this idea of a bad place that has existed for a long time that makes people do bad things and that's kind of an interesting concept because it's not a haunted house it's just a bad place and the people that live there and care for the place are affected by it and i tried i started trying to watch the movie because it is on tubi and because karen black is in it and I only, but I only got through the first few minutes and I didn't, I didn't get a chance to finish it. So yeah, Burnt Offerings was a bit of a wash for me. Maybe other people enjoyed it. You know, I mean, it is considered kind of a, you know, seminal 70s horror, horror novel. It just takes way, way too long to get to a point and to get to anything interesting happening. And there is not a lot of character development, so that's where I'm going to leave that one. Uh, the other, the other series I discovered this week or this in the last couple of weeks, I really enjoyed. Um, I've only got through the first two stories, but it's the creature feature on Kindle. Now the first story is the pram by Joe Hill. And it's about, it's a similar idea. A young couple moves to a, a, a rural, an area of rural Maine and there's a creepy and it's it's a it's it plays with that folk horror trope of there's a very creepy sect of old people who require things to keep their way of life going so it the it's a story that isn't without precedent but it's very set in a post-COVID world. Um, one of the interesting character factors is that the main character, his name is Will, he has no sense of smell because of COVID. So I thought that was an interesting character touch. So he, uh, he and his wife, uh, whose name I've forgotten off the top of my head, Oh, Marianne, right? Because kind of like Marion, which is another reason that I, I I read the pram and then I thought, hey, maybe I should pick up Burnt Offerings again because I've been trying, I had been trying to read Burnt Offerings for some time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, um, so Marianne has had a miscarriage and again, they live in New York City in an overpriced condo and they decide to go and live in rural Maine and they find a house that again is too cheap and too good to be true, but it's beautiful. But this time, instead of the house being the scary thing, I don't want to say too much without, you know, so I don't give away the whole story because I am trying not to spoil too much. Um, cause it is a newer story, but, uh, um, Willie starts walking to the store 
and there's this wonderful grove that he walks through because the the route as the crow flies is much shorter than it would take to drive there so he he starts going through this uh this like it's almost like a sacred space as he's walking through it and uh at the store it's a general store that has been kind of been there for generations uh the proprietor says well here take this take this old pram and you can you know you, you can transport your groceries um but willie starts hearing things coming from the pram that actually sound like a baby's in there and it just gets weirder and creepier from there so it plays around with well-known tropes um especially folk horror tropes but it what i found was interesting about it a lot of the time in the aftermath of a miscarriage um we have the woman's thoughts and feelings but we don't really explore how how a father is affected by that. So I thought that was an interesting take on um, it, not a super common trope, but still one that does exist. Um, you know, women miscarry all the time, and it's if it when it's a wanted baby, you know, it's it's a sad thing, and it's there is still a process of loss and grieving that that. Uh, the, the family goes through so I thought that was an interesting uh, interesting look w with of course the horror twist as as we usually are going to get from Joe Hill and then the second story <laughs> this one was this one was so much fun was Grady Hendrix and the story is called the ankle snatcher now the premise is that um the main character whose name I've forgotten he and a co-worker go out for a drink one night and she explains that she doesn't drink because her dad is an addict and you know the last time she saw him he was he left this this the family when they were when she was very young <coughs> excuse me he left the family when she was young and the last time she saw him he was living on a park bench talking to himself and she just doesn't want to be involved with any kind of substances you know perfectly valid so, actually, does this do anything? No, that doesn't do anything. All right, so the protagonist explains that when he was young, his dad killed his mother. And then left. And he grew up, you know, he was raised by... I can't remember if he was raised in a foster family or by his aunt and uncle, something like that. He was raised by someone else and they were wonderful parents. And now he's, he's a social worker trying to, you know, try, trying to do some good in the world. But what he didn't tell her is that his dad blamed it on the boogeyman or, or in his words, the ankle snatcher. And the ankle snatcher is the monster that lives under the bed that will grab your ankles in the middle of the night if you if you walk around without turning on the light first and in 20 years this guy has not he hasn't gotten out of bed without turning on the light and he hasn't gone into a room without turning on the light first now okay I really enjoyed this premise because yes that is one of my completely irrational creep out things I I have this idea that yes there is something under the bed that is going to grab my foot and the stupid thing is that my bed is on the floor <laughs> and there isn't even any under the bed for it to uh to grab from but I still have this this thing I have to have my feet you know I can't dangle off the off the edge of the bed I still kind of get a little bit nervous when I'm you know sitting on the edge of the bed and it's dark I had a dream this is when all of this weird ghost shit was going on. I actually had a dream that I was sleeping and something pulled my ankles and started pulling me toward the end of the bed. And I crawled forward on my forearms and it reached out to the, and I, it, it grabbed my ankle again and I pulled my foot away and kicked it 
I don't know if it was the face or the head or what, but I kicked back really hard and connected with it. And then it let me go. This is all in a dream. I mean, this is, this is probably not something that I could do if it was real, but it, it was a very weird dream. <laughs> so yes, this is the ankle snatcher is one of my particular creep out things. So, um, and then it goes from there and it, it was, it was a pretty enjoyable it was a pretty enjoyable book, I, I, or a story, I should say, because these are short stories, and there are six in the series. The series is called Creature Feature, and the stories are available individually on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to continue reading those throughout following, and I'll get back to you with a report on the rest of them. And I've started reading The Fall of the House of Usher because of the new Netflix series. So that's where I'm at right now. And I'm also reading another book, which I'll probably review uh, towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the month if I have time. Or I might read something else between now and the end of the month. But I did want to check in. I did want to say happy following. Happy October because this is the best time of year. And I hope you're reading lots of horror. Have a great day.